Drake gets his Fortnite on, Microsoft unveils their big E3 plans, and something big happened this morning with some kind of an Infinity War or something. I don't know, supposedly it's big. But anyway, we've got these stories and more on today's Looter News Live. Happy Friday, everybody. It is March 16th, 2018, and this is Luda News Live, your weekly recap of some of the biggest news in geek, gaming, and pop culture. I am your host, Josh Ball. Let's get into the news, shall we? For many fans of the cult favorite show Firefly, they thought they'd never see Captain Malcolm Reynolds put on the infamous brown coat ever again. At least, not until yesterday, that is, when Nathan Fillion himself tweeted out photos dressed as the infamous Serenity Captain on a very spaceshipy looking set. Now, before you get your hopes up, we just need to let you know up front that Firefly is not coming back on air. We know, we know, we apologize. As it turns out, Nathan Fillion is doing a two-episode arc on an ABC show called American Housewife, where he'll be suited up again as Mal. For reasons currently unknown, obviously, for those that have been trying to get Firefly back on the air for years, it's not quite the same, but it may be the closest fans ever get to seeing Fillion as Mal one last time. That brings us to our question of the week. If you could see a character from a canceled TV show come back on the air onto another show, who would it be and why? Let us know what you come up with in the Facebook live chat right now, and we're going to pick some of the best and most creative answers to receive a gift card to the Loot Vault at the end of the show. Moving right along. I mean, honestly, I guess it's been a pretty slow news week as far as geek news goes, unfortunately, so we're probably just going to wrap it up now. Just kidding, of course. There's no way we could miss talking about the bombshell that was dropped just this morning. That's right, the final trailer for Infinity War has dropped, and it is truly something else. We see a bit more of Thanos than we've previously seen, including him squaring off in various points of the trailer with each of the three first Avengers that we were introduced to when this all started about 10 years ago. And well, you know what? We're just gonna play the trailer for you guys right now in its entirety. And when we come back, we're gonna have some other development news about Infinity War and Avengers 4 to share. But for now, feast your eyes on the new final Infinity War trailer. The entire time I knew him, he only ever had one goal. To wipe out half the universe. If he gets all the Infinity Stones, he can do it with the snap of his fingers. Just like that. Tell me his name again. Thanos. We got one advantage. He's coming to us. We have what Thanos wants, so that's what we we'll use. Let's talk about this plan of yours. I think it's good, except it sucks. So let me do the plan, and that way it might be really good. Wow. The end is near. When I'm done, half of humanity will still exist. Perfectly balanced. As all things should be. I hope they remember you. I'm Peter, by the way. Thoughts are strange. Oh, you're using your made-up names. Then I am Spider-Man. Look, 
I don't know about you guys, but I am ready to watch this movie right now. Speaking of which, right after the trailer went live this morning, tickets went on sale nationwide, and I get the feeling they're going to sell incredibly fast, so make sure you pre-order yours as soon as you can to make sure you're one of the first to see the film in your area. Now, if you are one of the few who is not caught up on all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe films over the past 10 years, you are in luck. On Wednesday, AMC announced that they will be hosting the marathon to end all movie marathons leading up to the release of Infinity War, including 31 full hours of every MCU film to date, which is 18 in total. We're not sure yet how they're going to do it, but our hats are off to anyone hardcore enough to go in and make it through 18 Marvel films back to back to back to back to back to back. Yesterday, we also got some interesting news about Avengers 4. As many of you may remember, a few years back, Marvel did a big event where they showed the future of the MCU in a big timeline. That included what was then listed as Infinity War Part 1 and Infinity War Part 2. A year later, despite names changing since then, most people have been operating under the assumption that Avengers 4, which comes out in May of 2019, was the second half of the Infinity War. As we found out yesterday, not all was as it seemed. It has now been confirmed by the Russo brothers that Avengers 4 is not the second part of the Infinity War story. Co-director Joe Russo has said that fans should think of Avengers 4 as more of a sequel than a second part of the same story, and that one of the main differences of Avengers 4 is that it will focus on completely different heroes. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm as nervous as I am excited for what might play out in Infinity War now and how it's going to affect the MCU and Avengers 4. Definitely adds a bit more weight to what we previously heard about Infinity War tying up a lot of the loose ends and pieces of the entire last 10 years of the MCU. And one final treat for you Captain Marvel fans out there, Joe Russo has also said that we would not be seeing Captain Marvel in Infinity War, which I think was expected by most people and makes a ton of sense. However, he did confirm that we will in fact be seeing her as part of Avengers 4 next year. So Captain Marvel fans, 2019 is going to be your year between the Captain Marvel solo film and Avengers 4. It's looking to be just as great a year for Marvel films as 2018 is already shaping up to be. Now that we've got that massive pile of Infinity War stuff out of the way, let's change gears over to some interesting Deadpool 2 news that dropped this week. Starting off on Monday, there was a report from Entertainment Weekly where they had interviewed Josh Brolin, who was playing Cable in the film. He confirmed that reshoots were currently happening on Deadpool 2. Typically, more times than not, this isn't a good thing for a film. A blogger also posted that the test screenings of the current film weren't doing great, going so far as to call it an Alien 3 blunder of a story before later being deleted after threats of legal action by Fox. However, two days later on Wednesday, a conflicting report was released by a reporter with Collider who's much more connected to the entertainment industry and these types of screenings and went on to state that the first screening happened in January, audiences loved it, and it scored in the low 90s. The studio took the audience's feedback, went in, made some tweaks, did another test screening, and it scored even higher into the 90s. The biggest piece of feedback that they got from audiences after all that though was we really love Cable, we really love Domino, and we really want to see more of these two characters, which allegedly is what these new reshoots were all about, to add more Cable and Domino to the film. So basically, at the end of the day, we've got a blogger who said through the rumor mill that he heard the screenings were really terrible, and we've got a seasoned entertainment reporter who is way closer to these types of events and information who's saying quite the opposite. We're going to keep our fingers crossed that the latter ends up being the side of the story that is true. Josh Brolin was also asked about the fact that since he's also playing Thanos in Infinity War, if Deadpool 2 would be making any jokes or references to this fact since it's well known for breaking the fourth wall. Brolin didn't give a yes, but he didn't give a no and did say, quote, I can't imagine there's not going to be any references to Thanos. I'll put it that way. Given that it's a satire of all superhero movies, especially Marvel movies, how can you not? I certainly hope we get to see some of those jokes, and we'll be finding out soon enough when Deadpool 2 hits theaters on May 18th, just weeks after Infinity War drops. We are going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking about that big Fortnite Twitch craziness from Wednesday night, Microsoft's big E3 plans, and evil leprechauns in Call of Duty. Then later, we're going to be sharing your answers about what character from a canceled TV show you would like to see come back on another show and giving some sweet, sweet loot to the loot vault. So be sure to stick around.
you've spent all month trying to come up with the perfect gift. Look at that face. So excited. That's a good face. And that's a less good face. That's a painful, fake joy face. That face will haunt you. You'll see that face in your nightmares. The good news? You never have to see that face again. Loot Crate delivers awesome pop culture gear and happy faces every month, all year round. Unbox something awesome at LootCrate.com. And we're back! Now, unless you were sleeping under a large rock Wednesday night, it was hard not to notice social media light up like a Christmas tree about a certain spectacle unfolding on Twitch. A Twitch streamer known as Ninja has amassed quite the following over the past few months as one of the best Fortnite players out there. Chances are if you've seen a cool showdown or a trick shot on YouTube or Facebook of a Fortnite match, you have likely seen a clip or two of Ninja's gameplay. Before Wednesday night, he held the current record of most Twitch subscribers at just over 170,000. All of that notoriety is what set up the treat the internet received Wednesday night when rapper Drake joined in with Ninja to play Fortnite on stream and was later also joined by rapper Travis Scott, NFL player Juju Smith-Schuster from the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Mega Upload founder Kim.com. Concurrent viewership reached over 625,000 viewers at its peak, which is a new record for Twitch, shattering the previous record of just about 400,000 concurrent viewers. Most people tuned in for hours to watch Drake and Ninja play, with Ninja putting in some work while listening to Drake talk about things like the fact that he and his team play Fortnite in the studio to take a break between long recording sessions, or if Drake likes pineapple pizza, pineapple on his pizza, which apparently is a huge faux pas. He was also saying Ew. God's plan every time he res somebody, which I thought was super hilarious, among many other interesting topics. A lot of the allure seem to be seeing Ninja, who, while he is the biggest streamer on Twitch's video game streaming platform at the moment, still very much seems like a regular guy you'd hang out with and seeing him get to play Fortnite with the most popular rapper in the world right now. Many other celebrities also chimed in with their thoughts on it at the time, including Post Malone, Terrell Owens, Brendan Yuri of Panic at the Disco, Chrissy Teigen, and much more. If this little get together between a music celebrity and a popular video game streamer showed us anything, it's that this won't be the last time that we see some matchups like this or seeing celebrities get more involved in gaming and esports scenes in a much bigger way. And heck, I wouldn't be surprised to see a hotline bling emote pop up in Fortnite sometime soon as well, and I would buy the hell out of that emote. I really would. Anyway, obviously this whole thing was a win for Epic Games, the publisher of Fortnite who's been a bit who has been in a bit of an arms race with Player Unknown's Battleground or PUBG as it's most commonly called. Epic Games had a few other wins with Fortnite this week, including launching the game on Apple iOS devices which quickly shot up to the number 1 spot on the Apple App Store. The game also received a major update this week, which allows more players to play cross-platform with other players, and it was this cross-play functionality which allowed Ninja and Drake to happen with Ninja playing on PC while Drake played with him on his team from a PS4. Now, switching gears, you may remember about a month ago when we reported a story about someone getting their hands on an early copy of the map of booth placements of companies at this year's E3 and noticing Microsoft didn't have much of a presence on the show floor this year. And Microsoft quickly making a public announcement that not only were they going to be at E3, but they would be there in a big way and the map wasn't quite accurate. Yesterday, Microsoft revealed just exactly what it meant by that when it was revealed that instead of having its E3 presence on the show floor inside E3 as usual, that it would instead be taking over the massive Microsoft Theater across the street from the Los Angeles Convention Center where E3 is held, which will make for Microsoft's biggest E3 showing ever. Microsoft Corporate VP Mike Nichols said that, quote, not only does the Microsoft Theater allow us to centralize our Xbox presence at E3, but its size enables us to include even more fans and partners in the Xbox E3 2018 briefing than ever before. These changes, expanding our presence, multiple venues, taking over the Microsoft Theater gives us the opportunity to bring together a variety of Xbox experiences into one primary location, and most importantly, let fans in on what we're up to in 2018 and beyond in a fresh new way. Now, whether it's Halo 6 or a new game streaming service or some other surprise, we definitely cannot wait to see what Microsoft and others have up their sleeves 
at this year's E3. And finally, St. Patrick's Day is this weekend, and the folks over at Activision have decided to create one of the most interesting community events ever in Call of Duty. From now through April 3rd, the event, which is titled Sham Rock and Awe, provides St. Patrick's Day themed gear, new weapons, some fun map updates, and something else quite creepy. A new game mode called the Leprechaun Hunt Mosh Pit which takes existing game modes and adds a, uh, you know, creepy little twist. Now hiding a zombie leprechaun on each map. Not gonna lie, after seeing it in action last night, it's pretty freaking terrifying to have a little zombie leprechaun run at you from across the map while you're also trying to fight off the other players as usual. The game does give an awesome bonus though if you are able to kill the creature though by filling all of your score streaks in the game instantly. All right, we got one more quick break, but when we come back, we're gonna be reading your answers from chat about what character from a canceled television show you'd like to see come back on another show and awarding gift cards to the winners, so don't go away. You have made it this far. Like me, you came up through the ranks, through hard work and sheer determination. What you are transitioning into is unlike anything you have ever experienced before. We are sending you where other soldiers dare not tread. You will win. You will defeat the enemy. You will return, and you will do it all again tomorrow. Now, you are Spartans. Welcome to Fire Team Apollo. Welcome back. Now, before we get into this week's winners, we wanted to quickly remind you that from now until the 19th at 9 p.m., we are running our St. Patrick's Get Lucky campaign. You sign up for a new Loot Crate, Loot Gaming, or Loot Anime subscription, reactivate an expired one or upgrade an existing one, and use the code SHENANIGANS at checkout. You not only get 20% off, but you'll also receive a bonus mystery bundle and be entered to win one of 20 special Demogorgon figures with your bundle. We're also running a separate sweepstakes that anyone can enter where we are giving away a $1,500 St. Patrick's Day prize pack. If you'd like to find out more about that, head on over to lootcrate.com slash contests slash get lucky after the show to find out more. Now, at the top of the show, we asked you what character from a canceled TV show you would like to see come back on another show, and we have got your answers. First up, we've got Fur Sove, who says Troy and Abed didn't say what show they would be on. I'm gonna say that they should be in uh, Desperate Housewives, a reboot of Desperate Housewives. I think that would be wacky and hilarious. Uh, I'm just pulling pulling stuff out, Mikey. Don't give me that look. <laughs> Next up, we've got Sabrina Michener, or Mickener, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your names. She says, Space Ghost on Rick and Morty. I would be all about that. Space Ghost is just like a nostalgic romp through my childhood. And finally, we've got Christy Hurtis who says, Xena Warrior Princess. I don't know what show she'd be on, but I, damn it, I'd watch that show because I love her very, very much and her little chakra thing. Anyway, I digress. If we read one of your answers, one of our team will message you on Facebook sometime after the show today to get you your gift card to the Loot Vault. We are off next week while we head down to WonderCon, but you can have another chance when we come back Friday, March 30th at 2 p.m. Pacific to join us live, facebook.com slash loot crate to have more chances at some free loot. Additionally, be sure to also check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash loot crate to see our latest theme videos, all other cool shenanigans that we do on our channel. You can also follow us over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Loot Crate to join us for Twitch Tuesdays, where we hang out, play games, talk to all of you in chat, and give away cool prizes. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Josh Ball. Have a great weekend. Shaboom!